Hope everyone is staying safe and keeping well. And welcome back to another tutorial. In today's tutorial, as a follow up of the SASE Secure Edge SIG tunnel integration between the Meraki MX and Umbrella, today I'm going to show you how to configure the Cloud Deliver Firewall in Umbrella. Then we might discuss about you know what, why is it important for quick policies deployment and then what is the benefit of having centralized control and management. Right, for this tutorial, I've set up a simulated secure edge tunnel right from my Singapore office to a Melbourne umbrella gateway. Right, so it you can effectively or it should effectively set up your SIG tunnel to the nearest location. However, for this tunnel uh, or for this tutorial, I just wanted to show you, you know, how different branch might look like. So I have set up a tunnel uh, to the uh, Melbourne Umbrella instance. Okay, so now let's hop over to the Umbrella dashboard. So once you log in, you'll see that from the dashboard or overview page, you will see what are the tunnels currently uh, available right the deployment of your umbrella in the environment uh, this is shared between me and my dpsc so you can see it's not uh, fully set up yet however for the tunneling tutorial we have set up a couple of tunnels right so what you want to do you can go to the tunnel from the deployment web page here or you can just click on the active network tunnel over here so what we're going to do is to click on this you can see that there are a couple of tunnels set up, right? So we have two locations, uh, one simulating a branch from Tokyo. And for this tutorial, I will show you the simulation of the Melbourne uh, office. So once the tunnel is established, what you want to do is to go over to your policies, followed by your firewall policies. So this is the place in firewall policies where you configure the basic firewall rules, right? I've done a few for testing. So what I'm going to do is to delete them so I can start from scratch, right? Deleting rules is as simple as, you know, coming over here and deleting them. However, do take note once you dis delete them, right? Um, you know, you will lose them forever, right? If you want, uh, if you want to just temporarily turn it off, you can click on, uh, you know, this enable button here and you can disable the rules. Okay, I'm going to delete them to start afresh. You'll see a little bit of lag because, uh, you know, I'm from my Singapore office and I'm tunneling to Australia. So uh, even for the umbrella management portal, so there's a little bit of lag. So by right, you should be using uh, your nearest uh, location or do the configuration outside of a tunnel, right? So some basic things that you should know. Uh, to optimize your management capability. So by default, you will see this rule which allows any application uh, action of allow from any application to any port outgoing, right? So that you don't accidentally block your traffic. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you um, how do you block traffic to a simulated website or testing website so for those of you who have uh, been been through my you know webinar session you know that i have a srwkorea.com uh, testing web page right where i show uh, the importance of uh, multi-factor authentication right so what we are to do is to go to command prompt right so do take note the you know the layer 7 firewall policies uh, is blocked by you know as any of the typical firewall ip addresses right so if you want to look at uh, web pages uh, domain name you can definitely use the dns policies or the secure web gateway policies but for this tutorial we're going to look at uh, pure firewall configuration so i'm going to ping srwkorea.com you can see that i'm able to ping right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy the IP address, right? And there's a reason why the conventional firewall is no longer sufficient, right? Uh, today, when you look at web, you, you want to do uh, a little bit more granular control. So what we're going to do uh, for this is to go here and click on add. 
Okay, and we're gonna the first rule that we're gonna try out is to block ping to my demo website. Okay, we're gonna only block ping for a start. I'm gonna uh, block ping from any application, right? Whether it's command prompt or any any application that is in there. For source tunnel, we're gonna select my simulated Australian branch office, right? And source IP, I could have any, or I, I want if I want to block a specific subnet or set of IP address, we can do that. For this, we're gonna keep it uh, to any, right? And then for the location, we're gonna specify. The demo website all right and this is where you specify whether you're going to allow or block the traffic so in this case we're going to block the traffic all right and we're going to do enable logging so we can see what is happening all right and then click on save okay once that is done if we go back to the command prompt and initiate the ping command you can see that now we have blocked ping to the website. Now, if we do a refresh of the website, you can see that it will still continue to work, right? So, because we just block uh, pink. And when we do a refresh here, we should see a couple of hit counts. You can see that, you know, there's a pink hit, right? And of course, instead of doing refresh, you can also do a get latest data here. You'll see that, right? We have initiated a action right which has been blocked by the cloud delivered firewall policy now to bring this a step further which you generally don't do it here unless of course you're trying to block block a whole range of uh, ip address or a particular uh botnet right that you want to block the ip address so when you block the ip address uh it automatically deny all the web pages that you can go through. Now, the challenge over here for IP address is that uh, for the cyber attackers or the cyber criminals who are also getting smart and if they leverage on any of the content delivered, uh, um, you know, uh, provider out there, right? IP address blocking might become uh, a little bit more challenging. And that's where your web gateway and your DNS policies comes into play. But I'm going to show you a simple block to you know SRW um, Korea uh, I'm gonna block HTTP and HTTPS right for just for demo purposes I mean not too sure if there are any people who still use that these days but uh, it was you know the, the olden days of getting the policy set up right so we can do any protocol so in this case we're gonna do TCP right we're going to do any application. We can specify specific application if we want to, but for this, we're going to do any. Now, this is the part where we come back to the point number two, right? So if you have multiple tunnel, right, as you can see earlier, right? So I have three tunnels that are in uh, configured, two up, right? So I could actually select what are the tunnels that I want the policy to be enforced? So this gives you an idea of how quickly I can deploy a policies across three, four, a hundred branches, right? I could have a set of policies for all and then specify a set of stricter policy for some, right? So in this case, like for example, I only want to block um, the traffic initiating or going out from the Australian branch. I could specify the Australian branch, right? And then source IP address, I could even configure a certain subnet, right? That I want to block only. However, rule of thumb, right? Do not be too creative and do not customize too much rules as it's in human nature that we tend to forget, right? When things get too complex, right? And when, when you need to troubleshoot and when you need to, you know, tweak your policies, it becomes a challenge, right? Apply the default rules and filter down to the specific rules for certain specific location only right so uh, a couple of rule of thumb when you do deployment and day two operation remember that keep it simple right kiss right keep it simple and stupid right that's one of the key things uh, to start off with when you are protecting your branch office right i know a lot of us security folks like to you know be adventurous we like to learn and drill deep. However, for production environment, 
always uh, keep it simple, right? So that it is easier to detect. Now for lab, which, why I recommend, um, you know, the SEs and even the deploy engineer to have your own lab because this is where you can start to drill down and you learn a lot of things from the lab itself. Now source port, we're going to keep it as any. Now coming to the destination, we're going to specify the IP address, right? And then for the ports, right? I could effectively block everything, right? However, for the demo, I can actually specify 443 and, you know, port 80, right? Of course, uh, my web page has, re has a redirect capability for 80 to redirect to 443. So effectively, when I block 443, I would have blocked uh, the web access uh, to the standard internet. Of course, when they are customized port, uh, for those of you who are familiar with management port, a lot of the management uh, cap, um, web pages use 8443, for example. So you could basically uh, customize some of these blocks. So next, the rule of action, I'm going to click on block. I'm going to enable login for this demo, right? And then click save. Okay, policy save. Now, if we go over to my SRW Korea, and then if I try to go back to the SRW web page, right, you can see that it'll take a long time to try and load, and then it'll tell you connection timeout, right? So that is how easy it is to configure the firewall policy, right? And then if we do a refresh now, okay, never intended this to happen. However, if you guys have been following this uh, closely, you will have realized that I have not specified the destination IP, right? Uh, when I added it in. So what has happened over there is that I've blocked myself out of the access to uh, the internet, right? So be careful, right? When you're doing a configuration, Recommendation is, you know, like any of the firewall configuration. Uh, great thing with cloud security is that I can access my umbrella, right, from anywhere uh, with the right credential and MFA. So even though I've accidentally blocked myself from the uh, Melbourne office, right, and I could quickly recover from it, right? So... Now, what I need to do now is to go back there and correct my mistakes, right? So I'm going to add the IP address, right? And then click on save, right? Ideally, it should be much faster. So you can see that there are actually a lot of traffic that has been blocked because I'm running other browser application over there. So now that I have changed the IP address to, the, to one destination and two port, I should see that my Australia network should be back up, right? So let's go back there and click on refresh. So that's the beauty of, you know, Meraki uh, umbrella is that this configuration are all cloud man managed. So you can actually, res uh, you know, connect to your mobile phone, any of the internet and get access to it. Now, the only thing that you need to take note when for, especially for SaaS managed application is to make sure that you enable multi-factor authentication like dual, right? So that protects your administrator's right uh, credential. So even somebody gets access to the administrator credential, they will not be able to get into the management portal and create havoc, right? Very, very important. With convenience comes equal amount of uh, risk as well, right? So as you can see, we are back in my Australia uh, network, right? Branch. And then now if we do a refresh of uh, the srwkorea.com, you'll see that we will not be able to go there. Our ping is down, right? So interestingly, while we are at it, let's try out one thing, right? So now I can actually uh, disable ping, right? So I'm going to disable the ping policies. My website is still down. But if I do a ping now, you can see that I can actually ping it, right? Quite interesting to play around with the capability, especially when you start to drill into different protocol, uh, API connection, 
uh, secure file transfer, etc., etc. Uh, there are a lot of things you can do. Uh, as you can see, we are still not permitted because you know we have dis uh, disabled the connection through the HTTP HTTPS. Okay, so that's all for today's uh, demo, right? Uh, we can do a lot more with this, but I want to keep it simple and short for now. Uh, you guys get to see a negative demonstration where I lock myself out from the Australian network. But hey, you know, it's, it's one best practice to keep in mind uh, when you're configuring your environment, right? So that's all, folks. Thank you very much, you know, for staying through the video and stay safe.